Generation Z. Our first members were born in 1996. We lived during the re-election of Bill Clinton, the introduction of Pokemon, and the growth of eBay. Since then, Gen Z has experienced even more, the good, the bad, and the in-between. I myself am a devoted member of this generation, like many of you watching. At 17 years old, I spend my time doing what most teenagers do, scrolling through my social media networks, sending my friends amusing memes, and browsing trending news stories. A few months ago, I was munching on some delicious avocado toast and slurping down a vanilla latte when I came across an interesting article on my phone. Why the Z in Gen Z mean zombie. I nearly choked on a chunk of avocado. After many hours of online research, I had found dozens of blogs hammering and disparaging Gen Z to the core. It appeared that internet users everywhere had allied together to bully this generation, my generation. It became clear that we needed some backup and that someone from Gen Z was going to have to do it. So here I am, standing in front of you all, hoping to impart some sense of why I believe that Generation Z deserves some credit, but also how we must continue to be empowered to create reform in our society in the years to come. With the wealth of experience at a young age, access to powerful technological tools, and a competitive desire to be seen and heard, Gen Z is poised to have a lasting and impactful experience on the world. Our generation is the first to come of age with the understanding that climate and ecological breakdown is not a dystopian movie premise, but a real burning possibility. But what truly is Gen Z? Who are we? What do we stand for? What is our role in the context of all of the generations that have preceded us? These are questions I've had time to reflect on in the past few months, particularly as I've determined which college I plan to attend and am embarking on my next steps into adulthood next month. Even when equipped with years of more life experience than Gen Z, older generations have doubted our participation in societal matters. What wars have they fought and died in is one popular question. In fact, the answer is several, including conflicts in Iran, Iraq, and Syria. But it's important to note that waging endless war is not the only way we can fight in this generation. Developing a wide breadth of knowledge and developing powerful organizational tools is a way we've found to be much more effective. Generation Z has proved that we are not lazy or apathetic through the various teen-driven coalition, coalitions that have developed over the past few years. Take the Sunrise Movement, for example. A grassroots organization established in 2017, this teen-driven coalition has led climate strikes across the world, but has also fiercely lobbied congressional and political leaders to take drastic action. Greta Thunberg, an 18-year-old environmental activist, took a 13-day cross-Atlantic voyage to decrease her carbon footprint as she traveled to the United Nations Climate Action Summit two years ago. She has faced relentless attacks from former President Donald Trump on the weekly, yet she still continues her school strikes in the midst of a raging pandemic. And let's not forget the ever-expanding March for Our Lives movement. Just days after horrifying gun violence erupted at their school, Parkland students unfurled a campaign dedicated to ensuring that this would never happen again. Adults had failed them, and 17 of their peers had ended up dead. This nation's youth is under fire. We refuse to accept that daily gun violence is just the reality of life in America. Older generations need to absorb this rage and ally with us. My fellow members of Gen Z acknowledge that our lives will unfold in a state of emergency without direct reform. It's time to hear us, it's time to be with us, and it's time to view the world from our lens. And it's also so important to recognize how crucial it is that Gen Z has been surrendering our adolescences towards correcting this country's cruel course, which was created or otherwise enabled by the neglect of previous generations. These so-called zombies are who I'd consider to be bold and unflinching heroes. 
90 million Americans now belong to Generation Z. Though most of our population was not of age in 2016, we voted in large numbers this past year, and we will continue to do so as we gradually enter our voting ages. It's time to see us, it's time to be with us. Enough is enough. And while we see news stories about the world apparently crumbling around us every single day, it's Generation Z that's been handed this complex task of reshaping these complex societal structures. Yet, in the midst of it all, I sense hope. I sense a glimmer of passion. I sense the thirst for change, activism, and growth. Enough is enough. It's time for Gen Z to wake up and leave this world a better place than it was when we first entered it. So I will continue enjoying my extravagant avocado toast feasts along with my vanilla latte on the side. I will continue to peruse Instagram and Snapchat guilt-free. And I will continue to steadfastly support my peers. I'm with Gen Z and you should be too. The new kids are in town and we're not going anywhere anytime soon. Thank you.